You're in a foreign country walking around, sightseeing, enjoying an espresso as you wistfully think about quitting your job to travel the world. You see a bakery and you want to grab a sandwich before you plot your escape from the corporate world. Noticing you're out of cash, you swing by the nearest ATM, put in your card, and you're presented with this question. And you might just be staring at the screen for a few seconds while you try to figure out, do you accept the ATM machine's currency conversion or do you choose to be charged in the local currency? It might be like a eeny, meeny, miny, mo situation and you just want to get your cash and get over to that bakery. So you just kind of pick one or the other. But there is a correct choice when it comes to that ATM question, at least the choice that's going to save you some money. So let me show you what it is. It's the money. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I wanna to help you travel smarter by showing you how you should handle ATM currency conversions and the choice you should make every single time you're at a foreign ATM that's going to save you some money on fees you might not realize that you've been paid. When you insert your card into a foreign ATM and enter your PIN, you're presented with two choices. The wording differs depending on the machine, but essentially the two options are, do you want to accept the ATM's currency conversion to your home currency? Sometimes it's not even worded that clearly or you're just shown a conversion rate or do you want to be charged in the local currency? Remember this point. If you see a currency conversion on the screen or you see the words like conversion, rate or some percentage on the screen, that's your red flag. Here's the first choice and the wording might differ depending on the machine that you're using, but essentially it is, do you want to accept the ATM's conversion to your home currency? The second option is to withdraw your money in the local currency. In other words, if your home currency is dollars and you're in Turkey, the ATM is asking if you want to be charged directly in the local currency, which is Turkish Lira. The reason for this is something called Dynamic Currency Conversion or DCC. DCC is essentially a process where the ATM machine provider comes up with a conversion rate between your currency, the currency that you have at home from your local bank, and their local currency, which can be whatever the currency is in that particular country. ATM providers do this simply to make a profit. So they can charge you a conversion rate and make 2% or more per transaction every time you pull money out of the ATM if you choose their option of having the currency converted for you. It's not a ton of money on each transaction, but 2% can really add up, especially if you're taking cash out throughout the day or throughout an entire trip. All of those fees add up and you might not even realize you've been paying them. Fortunately, avoiding this fee, which basically comes down to a very bad conversion rate, is easy to avoid. When you're using a foreign ATM, always choose the option to be charged in the local currency. Do not accept the ATM's conversion or rate, and if you see those words, go for the other choice. All right, so let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're in Bulgaria, but you live in Germany and your home currency is in Euro. Whether you choose to have the ATM do the conversion rate for you or you choose to be charged in the local currency, you're going to get leva. The ATM isn't asking you if you want to get this currency versus this currency, although there are some ATMs that will give you a different currency if you ask for it. It's basically asking if you want them to do the conversion for you or if you want to be charged in the local rate. So in the end, you'll have 20 leva in your hand when you get done with the ATM. When you go to check your bank statement, it will be 13, 14, 15 dollars. It will be more than what the actual conversion was to this currency. The ATM provider did a currency conversion for you that you didn't need and overcharged you for it. To better explain this, let's say you want to take out 20 Bulgarian leva, which is about 11 US dollars. If you choose to have the ATM do the conversion for you, they might charge your bank $13 to get that 20 leva. Otherwise, when you use the alternative option, which is to be charged in the local currency, then your bank does the currency conversion, which is going to be the best rate possible without any additional charges or markup. To wrap up, I want to give you some points you can remember every time you use a foreign ATM. And honestly, I've traveled a lot. I've been to a lot of foreign ATMs and even I get confused sometimes because ATM providers purposefully use tricky language. They use tricky words and terms and conversion rates and they put numbers on the screen and they do all of that to confuse you, hoping that you're going to choose that bad option, which is to have the ATM do the currency conversion for you. You always want to be charged in the local currency. So if you're in Germany, that's euros. If you're in the United States, that's dollars. If you're in Argentina, that's pesos. Whatever the local currency is, that's what you want to be charged in. You want your bank to do the currency conversion for you and not the ATM. So if you see the words conversion and rate or numbers on the screen, always remember those are your red flags. Choose to be charged in the local currency. 
Now, you might be wondering if there are any downsides to choosing to be charged in the local currency, and there is one, one very minor one for a very select set of you, and it comes down to budgeting. A lot of times when the ATM is doing the currency conversion for you, it will show you in your home currency how much you're going to be charged. I know some of you track your travel budgets very carefully, very closely, and very up to the minute. So every time you take money out of the ATM, you might be putting that on a spreadsheet in your phone just to keep on top of your travel budget. So it might be comforting to see the exact amount that's being withdrawn from your account on the screen in your home currency. And that's kind of what the ATM provider is hoping. They're hoping when you see your home currency on the screen, so let's say $16.51, they're hoping when you see that, you're going to go, hey, I recognize those numbers. I know what that means. Those are familiar. And I also know exactly how much is going to be withdrawn out of my bank account. The ATM provider is hoping that you're going to say all of those things and choose to let them do the currency conversion for you. And for that privilege, they're going to charge you 2% or more as an added fee to do that. So if you're one of those people that checks your travel budget very frequently, you update it all the time, just put it in your phone. Just check your bank statement in your phone after you make the withdrawal. Wait five or 10 minutes and then go on your phone, type it in, and then there you go. Your travel budget will be up to date because if you are tracking your travel budget that carefully, you're going to see those 2% charges are going to add up. And it's a sneaky fee because you don't really realize it at the time. So you'll see in your bank statement, $16.51 was deducted, but you won't know how much of that was the currency conversion fee, right? So you've got in your hand the local currency, and then later your bank statement is going to show you how much they took out of your bank account. And there's going to be a discrepancy there of about 2% which you've just paid extra, which you didn't need to. It's a sneaky fee. So remember, always be charged in the local currency. And besides, you have some time, you can update your travel budget at the end of the day because you've got to get that sandwich across the street from that bakery and actually enjoy your travels. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this video helps save you some money the next time you're using a foreign ATM. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.